Hey guys, how's it going? Sorry here. So today I wanted to talk about Johanna. Johanna is what you consider a main tank in Heroes of the Storm. So you have pretty much three main tanks for the most part in the game right now. You have Mirrodin, you have ETC, and you have Johanna. Of course, of course there's other tanks. You have Chen, you have Leoric, you have Arthas, and quite a few others. But really, it's these three heroes that are really designated as main tanks. What that means is you can get away with running only one of them in a team comp. So if you run Chen, then you probably want to run another Bruiser in your team because Chen alone doesn't have the, the necessary skills to be considered as a main tank. So what is a main tank? So a main tank is someone that doesn't die if they play up, so they're very tanky, and they don't really do that much damage, but they have a lot of utility. So usually the utility is based around stuns and... So if you can look at Mirrodin, ETC, and Johanna, they all have CC, they're all very tanky, and Mirrodin and ETC are very mobile, while Johanna has Iron Skin. So Johanna is probably the tankiest hero in the game, the most difficult hero to kill, and she probably has one of the lowest, some of the lowest DPS numbers in the game as well. So you, you're not really there to do damage, you're there to kind of peel as your team, for your team. And the general role as Johanna is to act as kind of a disruptor, and to kind of create chaos, if you will. So when your allies are being engaged on, you have a few tools to help them out. Level one, or at level one without your, your heroic, you have punish, which is basically a slow and does some damage. Condemn, it's going to pull enemies away from your team and it's going to stun them for a tiny amount of time. Now, the fact that it does stun is very helpful. Um, for interrupting abilities. So if this just pulled, it wouldn't interrupt things like Tychus's Q, overkill, uh, because it would movement abilities don't affect, um, don't interrupt. So because it stuns, it, it does things like interrupt Medic's uh, healing ray and interrupting strafe and things like that. So the, the part that it does stun, even though it's only for 0.25 seconds, is very important. This is also your primary wave clear, and this makes Johanna one of the best wave clear tanks in the game. And by far the best wave clear out of ETC, Mirrodin, and Johanna. Uh, this makes her a very good choice on rotation maps. And so for Tomb of Spider Queen, Dragonshire, maybe even Infernal Shrines. And kind of weaker on bigger, more global maps where wave clear isn't as important. So say Cursed Hollow, Towers of Doom, and Warhead Junction. Of course, that's not to say that she isn't good on those maps. But you don't need the wave clear as much. And wave clear is a fairly large part of her kit. He is Shield Glare, and this is basically a point-and-click cone ability that if you hit enemies, it does a bit of damage. The damage is very, very low, and it but more importantly, it blinds them for 1.5 seconds. So this is very good um, to... This is something that you don't just use whenever you have it. You definitely save it for when you think your allies are going to take a key amount of attack damage. So if, if, you, if you there's an Illidan... You can just use it against an Illidan. If they have a Butcher and he's trying to heal, you can use it against the Butcher. If the enemy team has a Vala or a Tychus, especially if Tychus activates a minigun, you can avoid a lot of damage that way. And just hitting as many targets as you can, but mostly the key targets will significantly reduce the damage that your allies take. Um, using it at the, at the right time is key to playing Johanna. It also has a number of other things. It's a really, really, really good poke ability. So you can see it's instant, and the range is quite far, and the area that it covers is quite big. So it's really good at interrupting and dismounting heroes. So as Johanna, you want to be annoying to the enemy team because you can play so aggressively. That allows you to dismount heroes, and dismounting is pretty important to stalling rotations and slowing down the enemy team. So the enemy team is, is trying to capture a tribute on um, Towers of Doom or Curse Hollow, or they're trying to capture some kind of point or turn in objectives on... In the Spider Queen, Shield Glare is very, very useful for interrupting. And it's something that Mirrodin, especially since it can't be blocked by something, whereas Mirrodin's Stormbolt can be if he's trying to interrupt, and the range is a lot longer, and it hits multiple targets. So this is a very useful tool, not just for the blind. You don't want to be using it for damage, though. It does very, very little damage. I mean, all of Joe's abilities do low damage. You can see that her Punish only does 248 damage, and that's not a lot at all. And the rest of her abilities do basically just as little. She does less damage than a level 1 Chromie for the most part. Um, however, she is, if she stays on a target with some talents, um, she can be very annoying to deal with and definitely does damage. Um, now the last ability that she has is Iron Skin. 
And when you activate it, it grants you a very hefty shield and it makes you unstoppable. So this is very, very, very useful and is key to playing Johanna properly. So you can use it for a number of things. Of course, you can just use it to avoid damage. But what makes Johanna so good is that she counters um, a lot of other tanks. Like she counters Murden, she counters ETC for the most part. Um, and that's because she has Unstoppable. So she's very good at countering um, heroes that can CC. And by counter, I mean that she's a very good choice to have as a main tank if the enemy team has a lot of CC. Because not only is she very tanky, but she has a lot of tools to peel for her allies. And she has Iron Skin, which makes her basically invulnerable to the enemy team for four seconds, more or less. The amount of damage, or the amount of health that the shield gives you is a lot. It's, um, you know, almost like 25% of your health, maybe even more sometimes if you get talents. And it's very, very strong. So when do you want to pick Johanna? Well, you want to remember that if you pick Johanna, you don't have damage for that hero. So if you have a Johanna and you have a Medic, for example, which is paired often together very often, um, you're going to have very low damage for your team. So if you pick Johanna, um, you can pick her in any comp, but you just want to make sure that you have the damage to back her up because she does very little damage and she also has very poor engage. So the, you can see that all of her abilities, she has zero mobility in her kit. So if you want to walk up to the enemies, you have to pull them in, slow them, and that's all you can do. Until you hit level 10, you have a bit more engage, but still, even at 10, um, her engage is, is not nearly as, as good as, say, Mirrodin or ETC or some kind of other bruiser. So let's go over her talents. Level 1, you have Regen Master, Reinforced, and Righteous Smash. So Johanna doesn't really have mana problems, so therefore you won't need Righteous Smash. Reinforce is a very good version of block. It's better than normal block. Um, it gives 75% and you can store up to charges. And so normal block um, creates one charge every five seconds. And you can go into a fight with two blocks, right? And then you can get three additional blocks from using your abilities. Um, and note, these are basic abilities. So uh, it doesn't proc off of... Uh, I don't think it procs off Iron Skin. It might, actually. It might proc Iron Skin. I should have tested that out before. So talent. we have Regeneration Master. We have Reinforce. And generally, you're going to get Reinforce. But sometimes you can get Regeneration Master. So the reason you don't really want Regeneration Master is that it doesn't give you that much health regen. And it takes a long time to stack up. 30 globes is a lot. Especially on larger maps. So you'd only really want to take this talent or think about it on Infernal Shrines. Um, maybe on Brax Holdout. Tomb, Tomb of the Spire Queen. Dragonshire. Um, those are pretty much only the maps that you're going to want to get this talent. And you want to consider it. So Reinforce is probably still better. So it's, it's, they have a lot of auto attack based heroes. Such as Vala. Um, or Sergeant Hammer. Something like that. Then Reinforce is going to be better. Um, but if they have a hero like Tychus or Zarya or Tracer, who just attacks so quickly quickly that the, the block churches are useless, you don't want to get Reinforce. Uh, you probably want to go Regeneration Master, even if it's a map that you wouldn't want to take it on. Uh, remember that since the charges last forever, a quick little tip is that you should go into base at the fountain when you start the game and use two abilities so that you enter the game with two block charges. Um, and then it's, it's, a, it's a tiny little buffer that you can use. So level four, you have Amplified Healing, Roar, Eternal Retaliation, and Laws of Hope. So Laws of Hope is standard. Uh, amplified Healing is good if you have Double Healer, or you have like a Malfurion, or you have a Medic, someone that heals a lot. But Laws of Hope is standard. Roar, I mean, again, Johanna's not a DPS hero, so her base damage is already very low. So even a 50% damage increase still means that her base damage is quite low. Eternal Retaliation reduces the cooldown of Condemn up to 7.5 seconds um, from 10 seconds, which is obviously a huge cooldown reduction, but there's two things with that. One, Condemn isn't very impactful. You basically just use it to wave clear. So if you're using this for PvE, you wave clear a tiny bit faster. But I mean, your, your team should be there to help you. So you, this is kind of an unneeded talent. And in team fights, you know, having even if you hit five heroes, it's not going to give you that much reduction um, in CDR. It's going to give you moderate. And, and that's not something that's very likely. Of course, you don't have to hit heroes for this to proc, but it's still not very impactful. I think Laws of Hope is just really good. 20% health every 60 seconds is a good, is really helpful in case you're getting bursted. And if you look at her health regen, it's at 11.14. So this this is going to triple your health regen. That's quite a bit. So if you get Laws of Hope with Regeneration Master, that's a pretty big spike. Of course, Regeneration, Regeneration Master is also still good with Amplified Healing. So generally, you're going to get Laws of Hope. 
At level 7, you have Bless Momentum, Conviction, the Crusader marches on, and Sins Exposed. Sins Exposed does very little damage. There's no point in taking it. Um, again, it's going to slightly increase the amount of damage that Shield Glare does, but your base damages are so low in the first place, it's not worth taking. You're taking Johanna as the tank, as a Disruptor. You're not taking her as a DPS hero. If you want a DPS tank, you should pick a DPS tank. Trying to make up for it by taking DPS talents on Johanna is just not efficient. You can get so blessed momentum is generally what I always go, um, but you, you can go conviction if they have a lot of backline. So they have a triple backline or something. It can be again, like I said, Johanna has very little engage, so having conviction can help you get into the fight. The Crusader marches on can be really good. But the enemy team has a ton of CC and a ton of crowd control, and you really need to have Iron Skin available. But most of the time, you won't need this at all, and you're perfectly fine going blessed momentum. This is if they have. ETC, Kerrigan, Taronda, you know, Alarak, like really scary bursts. Like every single hero on their team, they have a Malph as well, and they just have tons of silences, tons of CC, and you really need your Iron Skin up whenever you can. Uh, Bless Momentum, you have to remember that, yes, while her abilities don't do a lot of damage, Bless Momentum actually gives you quite a lot of utility, and her attack rate is pretty slow. It's, point, it's less than one per second, uh, so that's fairly slow, but it's still going to give you pretty good cooldown reduction, and it's going to reduce the cooldown of, of, of your abilities significantly. Um, it's going to reduce it by, you know, up to, you know, 40%-ish. So, Blessed Momentum is generally the, your best choice. Again, if they have a lot of backline, three or four ranged heroes, you, you probably don't want Blessed Momentum, because you just won't have anything to auto-attack. This also helps with your wave clear. So, at level 10, Blessed Shield is standard. Uh, so it's basically a targeted stun that also bounces. Um, so this is good for most of the time. It's good as counter engage, and it's good just in a lot of scenarios. The range is, is fairly long, um, and it's a fairly quick skill shot. It's pretty easy to use. Um, the width is pretty big, even so it can still take a little bit of time to hit. And of course it bounces, so it's a little bit more kind of skill based in terms of some you don't have to hit them directly you can hit a minion or something behind if you're just trying to tag them with it the other option you have is falling sword and falling sword actually does a ton of damage the cooldown is very low and the range is huge on it so if i just reset talents talent. here really quick and i get falling sword the, the range that you can use is very very large and the drop area is very large and the damage is very high 800 damage compared to like you know 121 damage on Condemn, 129 on Shield Glare, like the damage is, is very, very considerable on Falling Sword. Now, of course, the enemy team has plenty of time to dodge it, especially if they have very mobile heroes, and you you don't really want to be diving in that deep most of the time. It can be a good choice if you pick Johanna, say in Quick Match, or you pick her in Hero League, and then the enemy team, you pick her early in Hero League, and then the enemy team then reacts to it. They have a team that you need to engage on hard. And if your team lacks engage, Falling Sword can be good. But again, it's like I said earlier, if you really want to engage on your team, just don't pick Johanna. Just Blush Shield is going to be by far the best choice most of the time. Falling Sword is basically, oh crap, we picked Johanna, we have no engage. Okay, now we have to do something desperate and go Falling Sword. At 13, we have Burning Rage, Hold Your Ground, Subdue, and Spell Shield. So standard is Burning Rage. And this is because the other talents are generally suboptimal. In addition, um, all the talents here, so Hold Your Ground and Spell Shield are both um, defensive abilities, and Subdue is utility. So you don't really need any more defensive options on Johanna most of the time because she's already so tanky and her damage is so low. And Burning Rage is pretty sustained damage, and it also helps your wave clear. So previously, if you, if you W and use Condemn to wave clear, it won't completely clear. But when you have Blessed Momentum and you have Burning Rage, you'll always be able to clear very effectively. And it's still going to do substantial amount of damage to the, the enemy team. And by substantial, I mean it does decent com considering uh, how much damage Johanna does in the first place. So it's relatively high damage for Johanna. Hold Your Ground can be good if the enemy team has a lot of burst. And if you hold your ground in tandem with uh, the Crusader marches on, can really give you significant cooldown reduction. Uh, if they're bursting your shield constantly. So if you went, the Crusader marches on, um, hold your ground is probably what you're going to be want at 13, and the cooldown, are, you're going to have this on very low cooldown, especially if they're actually bursting through the shield. If they have a lot of spell shield abilities, 
Um, so they have a lot of ability kind of damage. So they have a lot of mages, Li Ming, Taranda, etc. Then Spell Shield's probably the better option over Hold Your Ground. Hold Your Ground's better if they just have a solid amount of damage overall, and they're constantly, um, say they just have like a, a lot of damage heroes, and maybe your team is very squishy and they're targeting you. So Hold Your Ground is the better option there against Spell Shield if they have more ability damage. Subdue is nice, but I don't think it's worth um, taking over the other options here. So you have to remember that this is a pretty significant increase. So 60, from 60% 60 to 80% slow, and then from two to three seconds. And remember that since Punish is decaying, what decaying means is that they're not slowed for 60% for two seconds. It starts at 60% and over two seconds it reduces to zero. So when you increase the slow and increase the duration, you're getting a lot more, in, like this is ex exponentially better than 60% over two seconds. It's not, um, it's not just 20% better and then at one second longer. It's when you have, decaying um, extra time and extra slow is a, becomes a lot more effective so at 16 we have holy renewal blessed hammer fanaticism and imposing presence okay so this is the big noob trap tier blessed hammer is one of the worst talents in the game if i see a johanna getting this talent i immediately know that the person doesn't know how to play johanna so it does at level 20 it does 90 damage to enemies hit right so compare it to Burning Rage. Burning Rage does guaranteed damage um, around you, 50 per second, and it always does damage every second. Um, blessed Hammer, so if we show it here, one, two, maybe three, okay? They're gonna hit, at most generally, maybe twice, okay? Most of the time it hits once. So you're taking a level 16 talent that does 90 damage. That's really bad. It's a really, really bad talent. It does very little damage. If this wanted to be a remotely good talent, it'd have to do like 200 at least. Or they have to make the hammer more reliable and hit more often. It's like I can't stay, stay, overstate how bad this talent is. It's really, really bad. The damage it does is extremely low. Um, so I know that if I, I, someone takes this, that they don't know how to play Johanna. Because if they did the math on it, they'd see that it's an awful talent. Uh, so let's just reset talents She's here. Talent. Okay, so the other options we have are uh, Imposing Presence, Fanaticism, and Holy Renewal. So Holy Renewal is standard. Um, imposing Presence, I just... Okay, let's go over Fanaticism first. So first, this increases your movement speed. I don't really see a purpose to having movement speed in Johanna. Um, the only thing I can see is, you know, like, you're already going to be on the enemy team, so you're already going to be stuck to them. It's Having more movement speed isn't going to make you stick more. Um, the only way that I can see this helping is if you're trying to escape. Um, I just... The movement speed... Does, like, you'll just be faster walking around attacking a target. It's not going to make any kind of difference. It's not like you need to kite or um, chase their Vala running around. That's not your job as Joe. Your job as Joe is just to peel for your team and be there in the middle between their front line and your back line. And you just stand there. So having more movement speed doesn't help. Imposing Presence is going to reduce damage that you take, but Holy Renewal is going to heal the damage that you take. And Holy Renewal heals damage more effectively than Imposing Presence reduces. So what do we mean by that is, it says it heals for 250 every time you hit a hero, at 20 of course. So this equates to, what it should say is, this talent heals you for about 4.7% of your max health per enemy hit. Okay, so if you hit 5 heroes, it's going to heal you for close to 25% of your max health. Say it's 5%, and that, that's quite a bit. Okay, so you can reduce, you can heal yourself on a 12 second cooldown, and it's reduced if you have less momentum. Um, so let's say that 12 seconds is going to be like, say... Eight seconds, you're gonna heal yourself for 20% max health on um, like an eight second cooldown, at least 20%, right? That's really strong. Remember that Laws of Hope, we got it because it was so good because it heals for 20% once a minute, okay? Over four seconds. So you can see that Holy Renewal is very, very powerful. If you get uh, Amplified Healing as well, that affects Holy Renewal and you're gonna heal for 30% max health. Uh, it's about 6% per hero hit. So 3% of your max health if you hit 5 heroes. That's a huge amount of, of health that's healed. And I, I think that it's way more effective than imposing presence. So level 20, we have Heaven's Fury, Radiating Faith, Indestructible, and Storm Shield. Indestructible is by far the talent you're going to take most of the time. Basically, it makes you invulnerable for 5 seconds when you would die otherwise. This is not only going to win you a lot of fights, especially late game. Remember that level 20 means that your death timers are like over 60 seconds. So being able to live through a fight and not get bursted is very important. Um, even if they don't have a lot of burst damage, this talent is still extremely good. 
it means that they can't focus you first. They can never burst you down, ever. Um, so if they burst you down, you win the fight because you, you pop indestructible and you just don't die. So a storm it's better than Storm Shield because I think that it allows you to play very aggressive too. It's not just the fact that you can play this same style. You can play a completely different game style and play way more aggressive than you would normally uh, because you have indestructible available and you force them to attack you. And you like it's almost like having taunt in World of Warcraft. You can just taunt the enemy team or indeed if you're playing Varian, I guess. Uh, Radiating Faith is bad. It just slightly increases the sun duration. I mean, it's just not a good option. Now, if you go Falling Sword, Heaven's Fury is actually very underrated. It does it doubles the damage and it almost halves the cooldown. So this is extremely effective if you have Falling Sword, especially if your team's lacking damage. Now, if you're Falling Swording in and you're just dying, obviously Indestructible is still better. And I still think Indestructible is good most of the time, the vast majority of the time. But in some situations, it's you could make an argument for Heaven's Fury. Um, as well, you can make an argument for Storm Shield. Let's say if you are never being focused, or if you're just trying to go for a core rush, and you're not going to die first, you just want to keep your team alive, and this could be better. So I hope to enjoy the video. Um, and until next time, I'll talk to you later.